Luc Messia Tangana becomes the pioneer city mayor of Yaounde. The 59-year-old civil administrator was elected today in a hotly contested vote at the Yaounde City Council premises. President Paul Beer will be present at the Africa-France summit that will hold in the French city of Bordeaux in June this year. Work at the Olembe Sports Complex is in steady progress with the Magill construction contractors uh, reassuring sports and physical education minister that the July 20, 2020 deadline will be respected. And those are our stories. Hello, thanks for joining us on the 7.30 News. I am Ben Menopufong. Luke Messi Atangana is the pioneer city mayor of Yaoundé. The 59-year-old civil administrator invested by the Central Committee of the CPDM was confirmed by, uh, by the CPDM with an electoral college comprising all the 297 councillors from the seven councils in the Mfundi, uh, Mfundi uh, division. Beatrice Law Samba reports on the electoral drama as it played out at the Yaoundé City Council premises. The session as of right started with the 297 municipal councillors on whose shoulders lay the task of voting a city mayor for the nation's capital, taking seats in respective corners. The oldest member of the council, who according to legal provisions directs the vote, expressed the wish to see the elections go on smoothly. It all seemed to be going as clockwork until a word from the CPDN Central Committee representative, Ibrahim Tabamala, declares that the party had chosen to invest Luc Messi at Tangana, a municipal councillor of Yaoundé 3, into the post of city mayor and that the College of Voters had given their consent. But it turned out voters were not unanimous. A couple of them raised fingers to contest the choice, going as far as declaring their candidacy, which visibly did not please party hierarchy. Attempts by the presiding senior divisional officer Jean-Claude Silla to call them to order proved futile. The outgoing city mayor, Gilbert Simevuna, then called party section presidents aside for a tete a tete, imposing a break on the voting process, which did not seem to advance in these circumstances. An hour later, the session resumed. One of the contesting parties had mandated someone to say he had withdrawn his candidacy, making room for the Central Committee's unique choice and the votes could resume again, uninterrupted. Party discipline seemed to have reigned over personal interests. The CPDM had an upper hand in the election of the only city mayor, having won all of the seven subdivisional councils concerned. And Mr. Luke Messia Tangana is not a newcomer in the administration, having occupied key posts in, uh, the, over the last 20 years, the last of them being at the Prime Minister's office. He is not uh, entirely new in governance, having been municipal councillor for years now. He has the daunting task of building infrastructurally a capital city, which reflects the greatness of the nation of Cameroon. Beatrice Lossamba profiles the new city mayor and presents his challenges. The choice of the CPDM Central Committee for City Mayor of Yaoundé fell on this man and he was confirmed by votes of the close to 300 councillors. Luc Messi at Tangana, in a word to the electorate, said this support from party and fellow mayors is the key that opens doors to its success in running the city that happens to be the country's capital. The new city mayor has proved to be a good steward before, promoted from one administrative post to a higher one after graduating from the University of Yaoundé with a degree in public law and later from the Advanced School of Administration and Magistracy in Nam as civil administrator. In the last 20 years, he climbed the ladder at the Prime Minister's office, where he is presently chargé d'études at the Secretary General's office. 
He is stepping into the shoes of mayor for the first time, but he has been municipal councillor in Yaoundé Tree with headquarters in Fulan, where he was born some 59 years ago. The presidency of the elite of Yaoundé Tree, post of grand councillor at the Yaoundé City Council, for the plunged him into development matters. And development will be his business now. The challenge is to build infrastructure for a capital city worth the name. His predecessor, public opinion holds, left a huge reputation as builder and visionary. And he's expected to keep the bar high, keep the city always clean, orderly and comely for its close to 3 million residents and visitors. And in a de related development, the first ever city mayor of Garwa is 56-year-old Usmaila Muhammadu. He triumphed over his opponent, Aliu Garga, of the NUDP party by 81 votes to 15. The senior divisional officer for the Benue who monitored the election exercise exhorted the city mayor-elect to work diligently towards meeting the development challenges of Garwa as it awaits to host one of the pools of the 2020 one Afghan. Luisa Kwanka Achata reports from Garwa. A hundred councillors of Garwa 1, 2 and 3 councils crammed the conference hall of the Garwa City Council to take part in the landmark electoral proceedings to choose the regional capital's first ever mayor. That choice fell on 56-year-old Dr. Usmaila Mohamadou of the CPDM, who secured 81 votes as opposed to 15 for his opponent, Aliun Gaga of the NUDP, with four abstentions recorded. I am very happy, I am very happy. The special session dedicated to the elections of a scene by the oldest councillor of the electorate was closely monitored by the senior divisional officer of Benue who had this exhortation for the town's first ever elected mayor and his two deputies. Le maire doit se mettre au travail. The mayor and his team should immediately get to work and prove their worth in maintaining and improving on the city's vibrance. Prior to this, Dr. Usmaila Mohamadou was the regional coordinator of the National Community Driven Development Program. He takes over from the city council's last government delegate, Amadou Elaji Buba. Inhabitants who got a glimpse of the proceedings pinned their hope on him to continue stirring the hub on the path of urbanization as she awaits international events such as the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations. And 50-year-old Dr. Daniel Ejo has been elected mayor of the Bolova City Council during a statutory session that took place today. The mayor-elect and his new deputies promised to prioritize the socio-economic development of the city and the welfare of the population. Details with Clarence Aze from CRTV South. The pioneer mayor of the city of Ebolova, Dr. Daniel Ejo, was the lone candidate proposed by his party, the CPDM, following a meeting held behind closed doors Tuesday morning. 54 of the 62 councillors of the Ebolova 1 and 2 councils cast their ballots in his favor, while eight slotted blank ballots. Once declared winner, the 50-year-old medical doctor and agro-pastoral entrepreneur, overwhelmed with joy, promised to ameliorate the well-being of Ebolova city dwellers through the decongestion of the main market, complete the construction of the abandoned building to host the city council, and so on. Our effort is actually to help the population to have access to basic services like water, like electricity, to improve their living quality and to assist the head of state in implementation of his policy. Dr. Daniel Ejo will be assisted by Jean Richard Vondo Eya as first deputy and Madame Bisa Asako as second deputy. The elective session was supervised by the eldest and youngest councillors in the presence of the senior divisional officer Fordham Villa, Siliak Marine Vogo, and the CPDM envoy, Edward Akam Mfumo. The city mayors who were being elected across the country today have wide-ranging financial and administrative powers as outlined in the decentralization code. These financial and administrative powers are accompanied by challenging responsibilities as well. Kilian Dandifa now revisits the role and attributions of the city mayors as contained in the decentralization code. 
common complaint before the new general decentralization code was that it was unjust to have appointed government delegates rule over elected officials, some of whom belong to different political parties with opposing ideologies and development visions. Following the new code of December 24, 2019, an elected city mayor has the following attributes. Prepares and carries out urban council board deliberations. Prepares and have the city council budget executed. Organizes and manages the city council business. Manages council resources and patrimony. Heads community works and represents the agglomeration in protocol ceremonies. The General Decentralization Code gives wide-ranging financial and administrative autonomy to the local council authorities, and this goes with responsibilities such as mercilessly fighting urban disorder, which has become an unenviable trademark in Cameroonian cities. Beyond responsibility, they have a mandate of five years to produce results, nothing else. Joining me now in the studio is our regional news editor, Clarice Arway Takang, who will be giving us some insights into some of the responsibilities that, and challenges, of course, that await these newly elected city mayors. Good evening, Clarice. Hello, Ray. Tell me, what do we expect of all of these mayors who are city mayors who have been happily assuming offices in their respective councils? Today? Well, Ben, there's quite a lot that will be expected from city mayors. They've all been elected or some are still being elected in different towns of Cameroon. But we know their main job is to oversee effective town planning. And the how is what is going to keep them effectively busy, quite busy, I must say. Because when we talk about town planning, they will be expected to promote the valorization of communal tourist size. They will equally be expected to oversee the proper management of regional, national, and divisional road networks. They will equally be, um, they, they, they'll be, they'll equally be expected to oversee proper waste management, both industrial and household waste management. They will have to be involved in the elaboration of community plans that have to do with the proper coordination of networks involving water supply, energy, and of course telecommunications, and equally all those who will be involved in that, in that process. They will equally be expected to take part in all the procedures that will require that proper public urban transport is maintained in the different towns of Cameroon. And I would also like to mention that the proper management of public spaces is their responsibility. The issuance of different permits, we have subdivisional permits, we have building permits, we have Equally, demolition permits, that will be their responsibility. They have to properly oversee the management of green spaces. So I would say that a lot is expected from the city mayors. They have quite a lot to deliver on different fronts, which all play a crucial role in effective town planning. So much is expected from them. Yeah, much is really expected from all of these newly expe in, uh, elected city mayors. But what do you think they will need to be able to deliver the goods? Well, Ben, first of all, I'll say they will need to equip themselves with the appropriate know-how. So many have proposed, many analysts, town planning um, analysts have proposed that they should get themselves schooled on what it entails to be a city mayor, on what it will be needed, what it will take them to ensure that town planning is properly done. They will equally have to surround themselves, I should say, with appropriate or skilled manpower. That's very important. Human resources, it's a must in the different city councils. They will equally have to ensure that they are surrounded with the necessary tools that will all play a crucial role in enabling them to ensure that the towns and cities of Cameroon are livable not only for residents, but equally for visitors. Thank you very much, Clarice, for your inputs. And we continue this newscast. And you're watching the 730 News on the Cameroon Radio Television. We are beaming live from Yaoundé. The Electoral Board of Cameroon's elections watchdog, ELECAM, has been making an autocritic of its handling of the February 19 elections in the country. While noting with satisfaction the degree of commitment of ELECAM staff during the entire electoral period, the Electoral Board Chair, Eno Ibrahim Zegbe, invited his collaborators not to relent yet, given that the challenge is far from over with the rerun uh, ordered by the Constitutional Council in parts of the northwest and southwest regions. Joyce Kimbi Fawaju is here with details of today's evaluation meeting. 
Known for its organization of elections and supervision of polls in Cameroon, elections Cameroon within this eighth ordinary session is far from being a usual sitting. It's challenged by the repeat of legislative elections in 11 constituencies that were cancelled by the Constitutional Council. To meet up with this call, the chairperson of the electoral board appealed for mutual respect, tolerance, non-violence to enable them accomplish the rerun. It is worth noting that upon the partial cancellation of election by the Constitutional Council, a strategic coordination committee was immediately put in place to assess the situation of the existing election material and to draw up an updated planning of activities, taking into account sundry desiderata for an effective and harmonious organizations of these by-elections whose stakes cannot be overemphasized. General elections as well as by-elections constitute a highly sensitive and decisive moment in the electoral process of the country. In this regard, this eighth session also centered on an in-depth review of the various phases and aspects involved in the just-published twin elections in Cameroon, this to do better next time. The participation of President Paul Bia at the next Africa-France summit has been confirmed in Yaoundé. The confirmation was announced in the capital city today by the Secretary General of the summit. Stephanie Rivoil was granted audience by the Minister Delegate to the Minister of External Relations in charge of relations with the Islamic world, Adum Gargum. Charles Sebune reports on that development. The next France-Africa summit takes place in June this year at the French city of Bordeaux. Focus will be on durable cities. Nomad as one of the key partners of France in Africa, Cameroon, that the Secretary General of the summit heads to the Ministry of External Relations to give an update of the situation. I wanted to uh, convey uh, my sincere thanks for the confirmation of the presence of the, presi of the President of Cameroon at this summit. It's very important that he's present. He's coming with a, a large delegation of ministers. For roughly an hour, she holds audience with the Minister for Islamic Affairs, Adam Gargum, at the Ministry of External Relations. The topic is sustainable cities, economic development, employment of the youth. So we're going to have, uh, I'm, I'm now very satisfied with my uh, interview here. She is accompanied to the audience by the French ambassador to Cameroon, Christophe Guillou. On the other side of the ministry, the Minister for Commonwealth, Felix Mbayou, receives a senior official from the United Nations Office for Humanitarian Coordination. Recently, there have been a few events uh, which went uh, in the majors, uh, and uh, it was a good opportunity uh, to clarify uh, our position and to show our willingness to support the government and uh, as the government is in the driver's seat. With Minister Felix Mbayou, the UN official makes a review of activities between Cameroon and that UN agency. CPDM supporters of Nangai Boko in the Upper Sanaga Division have promised to always stand behind President Paul Bia as they expect mutual respect in relations between Cameroon and France. This was during a meeting held in Nangai Boko recently and chaired by the head of the permanent delegation of the CPDM to the Upper Sanaga Division, Bidung Pat. We have details with Natasha Lemon. CPDM supporters in Nangai Boko in the Upper Senaga Division turned out in their numbers to reaffirm the engagement always be behind President Paul behind all circumstances. Also in the course of the rally, supporters of the party in this area said no to foreign interference in the internal affairs of Cameroon. In uh, Upper Senaga, uh, the population condemned what has happened uh, between the French president and uh, the president of, of Cameroon. They underlined that as a sovereign state, there should be mutual respect and relations between France and Cameroon for the well-being of the people of both countries. A motion of support and encouragement to the head of state signed by some elites of the locality, such as Ferdinand Gongo, Minister of State and Secretary General of the Presidency of the Republic. <laughs> Honorable Hilarion Eto, Minister Ismail Bidungpat, among others, was read. 
Cameroon and China are poised to expand in the scope of their relations of their bilateral ties. This new twist in relations between the two countries was made known through a recent conversation between President Paul Bia and his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping. The content of the exchange was rendered public by the Chinese ambassador to Cameroon, Wang Yingwu, during an outing at, the, at Cameroon's Ministry of External Relations. Charles Abune reports on this new scope of cooperation as it filtered from that conversation. in China twice. Enough fact for the Yaoundé Beijing hotline to be permanently kept busy because between Cameroon and China it is an all friendship affair. Our two heads of state have mutual conversations and they have discussed cooperation between our two countries. The latest presidential communications between the leaders of the Lion of Asia and the Lion of Central Africa are focused on mutually binding topics, especially since China has injected more than 1,850 billion CFA francs in Cameroon for the past few years. They have given instructions on how to strengthen relations between our two friendly countries. According to the Chinese ambassador, the situation in the northwest and southwest region of the country is improving and China will remain at the site of Cameroon. After all, she has already provided plus 1.5 billion CFA francs in humanitarian assistance. We think there has been much progress following the major national dialogue and the passage of laws, especially on decentralization. Around the country, the Chinese have constructed so many structures, including the multi-purpose sports complex here in Yaoundé. China has always backed the sovereignty of Cameroon to ensure security, development and peace. Yaoundé and Beijing remain hopeful that the alliance of communications are to better the world through fact-based shared information. And I'll take you over to our running series of the week, which has to do with NGOs, the way they function and the way they are organized. Non-governmental organizations, they are generally active in humanitarian and social areas and always receive their fundings through different sources with private donors providing a good chunk of it. Sociologists believe that donors of these funds may not only support the cause but are also motivated by the ideological, political or economic interest of such groupings. Cynthia Saptala took interest in the, the financing scheme of non-governmental organizations and put together this report. Activities of non-governmental organizations are financed by donations. Donations coming either from wealthy individuals in search of some usefulness or recognition or multilateral corporations in support of a particular cause. But some sociologists see the funds provided often come along with interest. Those who are giving money, they are those persons who are rich and they want to show their humanitarian part of their life. But a part of this, they have also their own political and economic interest. It is the person who gives the money, who gives also the orientation of the work and activities of those uh, NGOs. And since the activities of civil society organizations are evaluated through financial reports presented to donors, these individuals or entities may influence the actions of these groups. In my point of view, there is a lot of uh, very uh, soft influence on uh, the work of uh, NGOs uh, today. The idea of independence or autonomy of uh, NGOs is not uh, true because the, the financing of your daily activities depend the, the capabilities to, to attend what your donors are waiting uh, for. By definition, these civil society organizations enjoy an autonomy independent of government control with an important influence on global affairs. 
A two-year specialization program in gynecology and endoscopic surgery has been officially launched in Yaoundé. The practical sessions of the program will be taking place in the equipped laboratories of the Yaoundé Center for Endoscopic Surgery under the supervision of, the, of international experts. Today's launching ceremony was chaired by the Secretary General in the Ministry of Higher Education, Professor Gabsa Wilfred, who was representing the Minister of State, Minister of Higher Education, Professor Jacques Famun Dongo. Enanga Kibi tells us more. The amphitheater of Crasse, dubbed Maurice Antoine Bruja Hall, was the venue for the official launch of the two years coursework for specialization in gynecology and endoscopic surgery. This has been the outcome of a partnership agreement signed a year ago in this very hall between the Ministry of Higher Education, the University of Yaoundé Won, and Crasse. Representing the Minister of State for Higher Education, Jacques Farmendongo, the Secretary General of that ministerial department, Professor Wilfred Gapsa, who chaired the ceremony, disclosed that at the end of the two years practical and theoretical course, the Advanced International Diploma will be jointly signed by the University of Yaoundé One, the International Society of Gynecology and Endoscopic Surgery, and CRASSE. Here, close to 52 surgical interventions annually are needed in CRASSE to obtain a pass mark. I think the foundation that is being uh, set here today, the foundation that is going to go a very, very long way, not just for our country, but the sub region, but I want to believe for Africa and eventually the world. We are thankful to the President of the Republic, Head of State, the Presidential Couple, for the support they are giving to this project. According to Professor Maurice Aurelier Soso, Director of the University of Yaoundé One, and Dr. Alfonso Rossetti from Italy, and a member of the International Society of Gynecology and Endoscopic Surgery, the initiative to organize advanced training in gynecology will go a long way to magnify the female body. The particularity of this first educational program in our setting here is that we are going to prioritize the practical, the acquisition of skills more than simple theoretical knowledge. Most of the time people used to have enough knowledge theoretically but without skills. On a positive note, it was announced that the Higher University Diploma on Seniology and another on Human Reproduction and Health Governance have been highly rated. A convention to set up a framework to empower uh, Cameroonians in the diaspora and combating irregular youth migration has been signed in Yaoundé between the Ministry of Civic Education of Youth Affairs and Civic Education and a German business center known as Himasal. Victor Siga now tells us the content of that document. Midi Live, the 52-minute TV program on the Cameroon radio television was a special one today as women of the state corporation seized the opportunity to entertain themselves. <laughs> From presenters to technicians and makeup artists, they showcase the other side of them through culinary art, music, irrespective of their areas of work. We've done quite a lot since uh, the week started, and today we are at the end of the week, and we thought that um, we should look for a way for the women to relax a bit. It's true, it's a program which is broadcast, but it is also an entertainment program, so it gave the women the opportunity to do other things which are different from the work that they do here on a daily basis. The program gave them the opportunity to talk of the challenges of their different professions. The activities continue tomorrow with a roundtable conference on the topic Women of CRTV at the Service of Corporate Culture, its impact on the social media, and a football encounter on Thursday against the women of the Hydrocarbon Prizes Stabilization Fund. And that was Victor Siga reporting there, but not on the convention but rather on the Cameroon, women of the Cameroon radio television as they mobilize to give their own touch to the upcoming celebration of the International Women's Day. We will be coming back on the convention in our subsequent newscasts. The Société Anonyme de Brasserie du Cameroon SABC can now produce two 
25,000 hectoliters of drinks annually against 12,800 hectoliters produced previously. This is thanks to a new production chain factory inaugurated at Ndokoto, Ndokoti Dwala by the Secretary of State in the Ministry of Mines, Industries and Technological Development, Fu Kalistos Gentry, in the presence of the Minister of Labor and Social Security, Gregoire Owona, and the French Ambassador to Cameroon, Christophe Ilou. This new jewel, which is the third in the world, is equipped with up-to-date machinery and will enable it to compete with, comp uh, with competitors in the sub-region. We have details with Kolama Loka from Dwala. Only two industries in the world up to this day possessed this state-of-the-art equipment. The green light number 14, which is a cream of industrial technologies, is henceforth among the installations of the SRBC group. With a production capacity of 55,000 bottles per hour and 180 million bottles per year for a total cost of 15 billion francs CFE. It is a major investment that will enable us to produce at competitive cost and prices in a context of high competition, as you know, especially from the neighboring countries like Equatorial Guinea and Nigeria. The idea is to make the Cameroonian industry highly competitive. We also have to prepare ourselves for the continental free trade zone, which is on its way. Considering that each product of the SRBC group is a commitment towards the development of Cameroon, the government has lauded this initiative and promised to accompany it in the valorization of locally produced raw materials. With the put in place of this factory, the production capacity of SRBC in Cameroon will double from 12,800 hectoliters to 25,000 hectoliters. The government really appreciates this investment and others envisaged by the SRBC group like the transformation of maize. This investment, inaugurated within the week at its factory in Dokoti, falls within the framework of SRBC's triennial plan in Cameroon, which was launched since 2017. As a French national, I am particularly impressed to see that this enterprise, which provides thousands of jobs to Cameroonians, is also making use of French technologies. This is because this new production line is composed of at least 50% of equipment from French industries. During this event, the SRBC Director General was recognized by the head of state for the contributions in the development of the country for the past 70 years. With this number 14 production chain at Indokoti factory in Douala, the SRBC group is reiterating its vision to be leader in the production and commercialization of agro-industrial products in the sub-region. Let's talk sports now. Sports and Physical Education Minister Nasis Mwele Kombe has congratulated Magil Construction for an impressive construction work being done so far at the Olembe Sports Complex, despite persistent rumors on the social media that Magil Construction had abandoned the construction site. Minister Mwele Kombe was speaking today after visiting the Olembe Sports Complex, where he was reassured by the Magi officials that the stadium will be ready by July this year. Bolden Summer was with the minister. He came to the Olympia Sports Complex to confirm that work has never stopped and construction work here is ongoing effectively. Work on the training ground of the stadium is effective with final touches effected. Minister Narcisse Mwele Kombi of Sports and Physical Education and Governor Nasewe Paul Beya asked questions and were reassured by staff of McGill Construction that 900 workers from Cameroon work here daily alongside 22 foreigners to ensure that this stadium is ready and on time. Des éléments de satisfaction au regard des évolutions positives. I am satisfied with the evolution of work here since the last time we visited. I would like to thank McGill Construction for persistent work carried out. Work on the field of play is at the last level with natural grass expected to be planted in the days ahead for the green turf to be ready. Quite visible is a section reserved for the presidential tribune with different lighting systems to be installed. We start in December. November was the end of December. 
all the contractual uh, issues uh, decided by the Cameroon government. Now from December, as we schedule, we talk about diagnostic, evaluation and starting of work. Magul Construction says work will intensify in the days ahead in all the sections of the stadium for the Olympic Sports Complex to be ready by July this year. Now on to our countdown to the 2020 African Champions uh, Championship tonight. We focus on the Omadu Ahijo Stadium in Yaoundé that will host Group A of the competition. It will also host both the opening match and the final of the competition. Walden Sama once again presents the stadium that uh, played host to matches of the 2016 Women's African Cup of Nations. It stands out imposing as one of the country's cherished football facility, the Yaoundé Omnisport Stadium, used during the 2016 Women's Africa Cup of Nations, is among the ready stadia to host matches of this year's 2020 African Nations Championship. All concerns to permit a stadium match international standards, CAF and FIFA recommendations have been taken into consideration here with the different sitting positions already beautifully fitted. The Yaoundé Omnisport Stadium is ready. You have noticed ongoing final touches carried out now. We are working with retained companies on the last touches. The commentary both for media men has been refurbished with ongoing renovation work in the new look press centre and TV production room being carried out. The different dressing rooms for both the hosts and visitors are available with much work carried out to ensure that the stadium remains a reference. Officials here say measures are being taken for the video assistance referee to be used at the Omnisport Stadium during the African Nations Championship so as for victory to be Camp Runes on April 4 during the opening ceremony and on April 25 during the final. Thank you, Baldwin. The 7.30 News on the Cameroon Radio Television. That's the way it was. Good night. TV News, ici, toute l'info.